Welcome back folks. In this video I get most of the components on the front end of the bulkhead all fit in squared away. First doors go on so I can align it again. At the end of the last video we left it with it was just being placed on there really. So doors go on so I can align the gaps uh, and then I can get the um, more important nuts and bolts in the front of it which hold it in place. So here's one you can see and um, I figured out I need a washer in there behind it. So you can see I squeeze a washer in there behind it and that brings the bulkhead to about uh, uh, perfect alignment, which I found in the previous video. So that's it, I'm running around tightening up all those nuts and bolts now like a lunatic. Um, once those ones are squared away, the bottom main uh, main bolts are tight now, so uh, really that's it, the, the job is done, those doors can come off again and I can get access um, to, uh, to all those parts to go on there. It's really nice to have it fixed in place now, so that's it, knowing it's on there and it's not going to come off again. So now uh, the first thing I'm putting this together in the order in the reverse order of disassembly, if you like the other one. So the uh, accelerator uh, assembly, uh, accelerator pedal assembly was the last thing to go on to come off the old bulkhead. So it's the first thing to go on here. So it slides into the footwell and then comes through into the um, into the engine bay, uh, and there it uh, bolts up uh, to a little bearing retainer, if you like, a, a solid bearing. I've got the little clutch hose uh, attached to its bracket now, mounting bracket, and then on go the uh, throttle cable not cable, the throttle linkage mounts. So a very convoluted um, throttle uh, attachment here. It goes along a shaft, uh, up a push rod, across another shaft, down another push rod to a bell crank, and then through another push rod to the carburetor. Crazy. They definitely should have used the cable, but even so, it's actually quite nice. And as I assemble it, I get the feeling it's going to amplify the movement of my accelerator pedal foot hugely, leaving a very sensitive pedal. But when it was all said and done, the lever on the carburetor is quite long as well. So actually it does leave quite a linear, you can see that you have to move your foot a decent amount to get full throttle. So for all it looks a bit crazy, it does work very well and it leaves a nice feel and with all the springs in it, uh, it keeps a, a slack free accelerator pedal feel. So this is the clutch going together. Uh, this is the cylinder I took off it, but it was new to move the lander just a few years ago. Uh, so with that cylinder in place, um, reasonably easy on the clutch, it seemed to go uh, together nicely. Then uh, I can get it on the vehicle. Using my tools there to tighten up the bolts, very satisfying indeed. There we go, in through the hole and that is in place. Uh, there's just the six bolts underneath that hold that down. For some reason this seemed to be a lot less hassle than the brake, but there we go. Uh, and then you can see there's just the one connection to be made then because it's an integral reservoir. So there's one, um, it's a solid line actually, it stayed in good shape. The original solid line, I think it was anodized, no rust on it at all, so I could go back in. And you can see there and you can hear the clicking of the impact gun as I tighten all those into place. Oh, it's very satisfying now to get these bits on there. Uh, so that's the clutch and yeah, there we go, tightening it from the inside. There was something to put on there. I think a spring. Yeah, a spring goes on underneath it. There it is. <laughs> the spring! <laughs> so that's the clutch. <clears throat> now there's this little additional bracket. It's only on the side with the steering column for the pedals. And um, that took a little bit of messing around, faffing around to get it all lined up. But that bracket is on. And then when that bracket is on, then the steering column and the steering box can go through there. Uh, so, yeah, as I said, there was quite a bit of messing about trying to get them all aligned, the bolt holes. The bulkhead ain't perfect, that surface which it bolts to should be flat, but it's, uh, as you saw in previous episodes, it's not a particularly good bulkhead, so it is in fact like a lap joint, so it's not a flat surface at all. Um, but I did get it to work. And there you go, the um, reassembled steering column goes in, uh, wind the bolts in, and then, as with a lot of these things, I end up doing the job twice, wind them in, wind them back out again. Realise I've forgotten something, so I have to come back and revisit it. Um, and in this case, yeah, there we go, it was that bracket up to the top of the bulkhead, which holds the steering column nice and rigid. But um, things weren't lining up brilliantly, uh, I guess, on account of the bulkhead being a bit of a mess. But um, I did have a bit of a struggle with those bolts in the bulkhead too. I think the threads were covered in paint. I should have cleaned them first, but uh, I did eventually get there and get it all squared away. So I tightened those up first to get the steering wheel in a sensible position in the dashboard uh, before tightening those bolts again um, down on the upright bracket where the steering box itself mounts. So with that all done, uh, it was then a case of attaching all the linkages. So the steering arm goes on, and it's a little bit tricky, but it's not tricky at all, is it? But find the central point of the steering, uh, so find how many turns, I think it's like four and a half turns on the steering wheel, so take it back two and a quarter turns so it's in the center, and then you want that um, steering arm to dangle down off the steering box perpendicular to that push rod, which I'm assembling now. So getting those angles nice at 90 degrees means you've got the maximum movement for your four and a half turns of the steering wheel, you see. 
Uh, so those assembled nicely. It's a nice one, that, that bar, because it's got a reverse thread on one end and not the other. So um, all you have to do is loosen the clamps and then just twist the whole bar. You don't have to take any joints off or anything like that and to adjust the central position of the steering wheel. Tighten those down with a big impact gun. I did eventually uh, check them over with a spanner and a ratchet. I don't get a ratchet there, so make sure they're all nice and tight. And that is the steering, uh, except for the steering wheel itself. That's the steering assembly, the whole thing in now. So lastly, pop some oil. And you see where it says no oil? <laughs> Keep an eye on that because it just disappears. <laughs> so this is some gearbox oil, EP90, you can see on the label, uh, which is what's recommended. Uh, top that up and... Uh, yeah, that completed the job. So in my notes, I've crossed off no oil, <laughs> and uh, there we go. There we go, steering column down into the steering box, and then you've got the first steering arm with the first push rod connection, which goes up to the steering relay, and then down through the chassis to the next steering arm, another push rod to the left hand wheel, and then a connecting rod connecting both left and right wheels, and that's the one you do the tracking on. So here's the brake pedal now. Now this one, I remember I stripped it down, but I did find it was no good in the end. So after cleaning it up, I ordered another one. So this one is brand new. And they're just putting the linkages on the top of the pedal now. So it connects and pushes the plunger. And then that is ready to go in. Down she goes, the last, the last pedal to join the gang. <laughs> Very satisfying again getting all these bits in there. This is by a country mile the best bit. Assembling shiny parts is, is fantastic fun. I really enjoyed all of this work. And it came together so quickly. That's the depressing part of it. The grinding and cleaning and painting takes forever. Uh, but this was a very um yeah, very quick job really. I mean I got most of this done in a day, I think. Uh, there's a little switch to adjust here and a spring to go on as well. That's the brake light switch, of course. Uh, and then the reservoir goes on. Uh, I did get a new yeah, a new rubber connecting hose um, because that one was perished and cracked. And there's a little bracket which goes on the top of the clutch uh, pedal box cover uh, and that mounts the brake reservoir to it. So the two reservoirs are nice and close together. Uh, one obviously quite a, little, a lot bigger than the other one. And then when that lot is done, I can bolt, yeah, actually bolt the reservoir to its clamp and put the top on the uh, brake box as well. That is the clutch hose as well, the last thing on the on the clutch to go on. So here's Pepper, I mean the um, the blower uh, going on, and then it's fan and motor goes in with a little earth connection. I think the last thing now, that's loose because I haven't got the, the foam seals that go behind it, but it's in place. Uh, the last thing is this brake line. The clutch is in, but there's a brake line to go from the green blob there down to that junction, I well, which, which is on the chassis there. Look. So I've got a fitting in there. I've just got to get one to fit in there, and then make up a brake line which will be out the way of everything. Here we go, brake line flaring tool. This is a lovely tool. I spent a bit of money on it a while ago after having worked with a crappy one for ages. I always spend money on tools, man. <laughs> it's such a waste of time when you buy it and you think, I should have bought it so long ago. It saved me so much time. So there we go, first flare done. So I'm going to send that one down to the distribution block on the chassis now and then start shaping that hose. As you can see, I'm trying to keep quite a bit. I've got the whole roll, in fact. Um, so I know I've got enough for the time being. And then when I've got that thing bent up into a position where I'm closing in on the end of the route, I'll chop it off, as you can see here. And actually, I thought I had loads of slack in there, but I didn't. I had just the right amount, which was quite lucky. So a few more bends, lots of things to get around. And then I'm able to um, go back to the brake flaring tool and finish off the end of that hose. And the key is to not forget the union. <laughs> I've done this many times. <laughs> Put the flare on and then realise you haven't got the union on it. Uh, but as you can see, I remember this time. <laughs> there it is, all done. Look at that beauty. Brake line's a lovely job. Very satisfying. Not at all dirty or dusty or noisy. And uh, nice and clean. And you, and you end up with a shiny thing, which, you know, if you bend it right, it looks really nice. Very happy with that. So there we go, tightening it down. As you know, with brake lines, Got to wind them for ages and then you've got to just nip them up. There it is, sports fans. So it comes out straight, kinks downhill, right angle, right angle, alongside the brake box. Right angle again, 45 down to get around this uh, galvanised edge, then to a P-clip and then straight down there to the uh, D 
distribution block. That's it for now, folks. In the next episode, I'll get some of the parts on the back of the bulkhead, uh, the dashboard, and uh, oh, yeah, get the lumen there as well, which is quite a lot of work. Thanks for watching this far, folks. Hope you're enjoying them. Tune in again.